Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stone Face Reactions. I'm Theta, this is Lessons, and we are here with episode 3 of Macross Plus. No longer do I have to say SDF. Um, first up though, we have a comment. Uh, Yamizu from the Patreon from Macross Plus episode 2. I find Isamu... Is that how you say his name? Isamu. Isamu. Highly likable as a character. He is basically Maverick from Top Gun. Womanizing, overconfident, cocky, but also incredibly talented. He got selected he got selected to be a test pilot because he can pull stunts that no one else can. It's that simple. As is shown in the montage where the YF nineteen and YF twenty one are measured against each other, and all the stats are way higher. In the end, for Isamu, because the pilot can get more out of a standard control system than the mind control system, which in the end is limited. Yeah, I did see yeah. that, but I had a hard time scaling it. I think the image is kind of like slanted sideways. Yeah. So it's hard to tell which one is actually higher up. Also, we see that board, what, three times? Where the YF-21 is higher to begin with, and then the Y-19 grows out. Yeah, I mean, but at the same time, I have my suspicions that both of them were selected for alternate reasons, which we probably will see in this episode. I don't know, because that kind of puts um, that puts motive on the commander who had nothing to do with any of this. The I'm and gonna punt the first one from the very the, the pre-opening bit. The I've got to punish you, so I'm getting you a transfer. Yeah, I mean, it could be basically that he was told, hey, I want this guy, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to phrase it in such a way that I don't look like I'm, you know, you know, giving you a gift, basically, right? It's like, yeah, whatever. Um, I'm going to punish you by getting you out of my... It, it's it's the idea that if you want, if you have an enemy, have them promoted, right? Kind of situation from the Romans, right? Like, yeah, I want him out of my command. I don't like you. I am not going to tell you that I like you in any way, shape, or form, or that I'm... I'm in favor of this. I want you to leave with the impression that you suck, you know. Because that's, you know, that's part of the, I mean, it's part of the, the culture, right? If somebody is a superior to you and they, they don't really like you because they believe that you are someone who is undisciplined, even if they're, you, especially if you're being somewhat rewarded, they're going to say, you know, it's like what happened with Maverick in, in the original Top Gun, right? Like, oh, hey, you assholes are going to go to Top Gun, right? I don't like it. I know you're an a-hole. I don't like you, but there you go. I got to send you there because, you know, the person that was topping the selection, chicken out, had a mental breakdown. So you now get to be, you know. Well, I mean, it's that, uh, that phrase, respect the rank, not the person. Exactly. Um, I don't know. I guess there's just a bunch of difficulty I have in believing that it's all a setup. Obviously, if it turns out to all be a setup, then one, you're a pre-watcher. <laughs> two, <laughs> two. I mean, I don't know. The fact that Bowman, well, the is, fact that Bowman comes a... from the private sector means that that's mm -hmm. a harder thing to rationalize. Unless Bowman was already there, and they're like, "Wow, we got the perfect setup for this because we know his backstory." Well, there is a moment where the colonel. Who is in you know one with the fake leg you know the the guy who is it, one um, of the program yeah uh, um, who is now Johnson yeah uh, Johnson after he he makes um he makes Isamu angry and Isamu goes out and punches the door and he says he's so easy to bait. Now that might be that he is has a preference for the galaxy instead of the other design, or he wants to get more out of him. I mean, you heavily implied that he was on the side of the YF nineteen, which is why the twenty one, which is no, the, the YF twenty one is the uh, the one Bowman's doing with the brain control. Yeah, that's what. That's why I think he's uh, in favor of that. Yeah. Oh no, you I mean, indicated I... before that you thought he was in favor of the YF nineteen, the one that. Uh... Sorry, it's and all cool, of my yeah. notes I've written him. His name is Dyson. Because Dyson, that yes. is his last name or first name. I don't know if they're doing the flip flop thing. 
No, no, I think they're using the English name, so they're not flipping, uh, flip, you know, they're not putting the patronym in front of it. I mean, I guess if they were speaking, they would say Dyson Isamu, uh, but, you know. Well, I'll be, I'll be uh, honest, it's a lot easier, for some reason, for me to remember Bowman than Gold. So I've written, so I've memorized his name as Bold, uh, sorry, Bowman. Bowman. Whereas yeah. uh, Isamu, I know it's easier for me to say, but Dyson is just easy for me to remember. And it does not work for uh, Myung, is that what her, we're calling her? Myung, yeah. doesn't work for Myung because her last name is Alone, and that's just a word. So if I say it in a sentence and I don't remember I'm talking about a person, you know? <laughs> Uh, I may have misspoke earlier, which it's always a possibility, and there's video of it, so we'll, you know, people are like, yeah, no, he said that, and if you, if, if I said why, YF19 before, I misspoke. I actually thought Well, you may have spoke. actually just done a thing where, like, you indicated to a thing that could have been anything on screen when I was watching at the uh, time, and didn't yeah. work clear, and then I just took it the wrong way. I don't know. It's That's probably for the commenters to clear up later. You also had notes, I think. Oh, I have notes, but I think we should go to the board first, just to have the board up. That when I do do the notes, do do, um, <laughs> it'll be there. Sorry, I'm trying to reverse <laughs> engineer. Where, look, I'm not going to go one way with humor anymore. I've made a promise about that, so I'm just going to go back to a five year old humor stance. So anything well, you've heard on Muppet Babies before, you'll hear from me now. Yeah, the do do that you do so well, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we got Macross Zero 2008, Super Dimension Fortress Macross 2009, 2012, and now Macross Plus 2040. And this is the character relationship chart that I came up with off of the last two episodes only, with every character I could remember being important, or even just shown, like the um, the manager guy who was on stage with uh, Myung. I'm gonna try and get her real name in my head. Uh, Myung is over here, and he's tied to the four people, or the three other people, with the Sharon Apple project, including Sharon Apple herself, which still, as far as I know, is Myung, Up until she gets the chip from Marge Simpson over here. Uh, but, you know, you have the childhood friends, which I guess I actually technically could have tied um, uh, Kate up here with Gold and... Uh, Isamu. I'm going to say Bowman. I like Bowman better as a name. With Bowman and Dyson. Because she knew them, and she's from the planet, so... I think they, they have a history. The Morgan and Kate are high school sweethearts. In fact, I think that was a conversation. It's like, right. oh, who you end up with? Oh, I ended up with Morgan. You're like, really? Morgan, right? Well, really? she lists the other two, though. She said Morgan, yeah. uh, Gold, or Isamu. So, the idea is that they were all friends. Or at least hung out together. Otherwise, it makes no sense to list them. So... That's a that's a change I should make or remember to make. Obviously, Gold and uh, Samu are antagonistic. Red line. I'm not a hundred percent sure, and I will go into my thoughts uh, in my notes about this, the relationship between Myung, Gold, and Samu. So that's why it's a uh -huh. white line for me right now. We'll figure that out later. Uh, Lucy and uh, Samu have something going on. It seems more than a fling, especially because they like keep going on dates. So. Uh, then you have the hacker dude who's trying to steal Sharon, so I should have tried to put some line between them. That's another thing I forgot yeah. to do. And then, of course, the colonel who's in charge of the entire project, so he's attached to everybody on the project yeah. and both pilots. I remember liking, liking Yang or Newman better the first time I seen him, but now that I remember, he's a jackass. I, I, I don't like him. Uh, who? Newman. Newman? Newman. Oh, sorry. So yeah. I thought you said Myung at first, and then you said Newman, and I'm like, that's not her last name. Who are you talking about? Well, his first name is Yang. Yang, Yang, Yang yeah. Oh, I said Yang. Yang. I don't know. I'm getting all yeah. these names oh, wrong. Yeah, you, you probably pronounce it better than I do. Well, who knows? Literally, that same commenter commenting about how I don't get any names right. That's why <laughs> I make these boards. You don't think I have these things off on the side when I'm trying to remember a name? Like, look over real quick? Anyway... Any uh, connection, other connections you think I may have missed or got wrong? Not really, because this one between Myung, Bowman, and Dyson is still up in the air. It's kind of the central thing, so it's well placed. These are, I don't think we're going to see Raymond. We only saw him in an interview, right? Yeah. Well, he, he wasn't in the command center where 
me only I only remember up. him from the uh, the conference, the new reporter yes. conference. Yes, so thing. yeah, really, the, the these three is Sharon, Myung, and Marge. Marge, yeah, he certainly. I, I mean, this guy probably got punched and kicked in high school, in in in, in grade school, like crazy. Uh, Look, yeah, I don't just, know what your last name is, but my last name was a source of derision among kids to teens. So I'm not going to make fun of anyone for their name. No, but it it sounds like he was he trying basically he has that evil sneer that says you know I am going to revenge myself against the world. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure that he is the instigator of the uh the instigator of all the bad stuff that's going to happen. Like he's not he might not be the bad guy, but he's the reason the bad guy exists. I'm pretty sure. So, nothing else jumping out at you? No, and also, this one doesn't have as many characters as we... Even even Zero had more characters as this, so, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, Zero had one more episode. So... Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, breaking into my thoughts, then. <laughs> so, obviously, I had a real problem with the uh, first episode that kind of threw me off into the second episode, which was the implied... Uh, how do you say Essay. Yeah, I guess. See, that's. See, I didn't know what to say. I was going to say R word, but I guess SA works too. Um, which threw me off. But I've had further thoughts about that on um, uh, reconsideration. So thoughts. First episode thoughts. Dyson Bowman and uh, Myung. Yeah. Sorry, I've, again, I've written down loan all over the place. So, uh, Dyson Bowman and Myung were clearly friends in the first scene. But something I saw incorrectly was that I thought Bowman and Dyson were competing with one another. For some reason, I thought Bowman had his own flying thing and was trying to outdo Dyson, with, you know, forming that relationship that we have in the future. I didn't pick up the fact that he was pedaling a bike to lift up and launch Dyson's flying machine. Gives a different context of the first scene that uh, I misread and then carried into what I thought their relationship. Like, I thought they were childhood friends that competed and then that grew into adulthood where in fact gold was helping dyson in the first scene yeah uh, let's see oh uh images to send you and to activate on the overlay it's talking as i do it in case you wanted to see any of that the planet 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 banapal uh, grab screenshots of the planet readouts and uh, that they threatened to send to Dyson too, in case you were interested in some of the layout of the universe on the cross, as well as the specs of Dyson's test aircraft. So I've got that playing on screen right now in the overlay as a uh, slideshow, but if you have anything you want to say about any of these... Me cross minus, <laughs> okay. And Macross is mid cross, mid cross minus. That's probably not a planet. It's probably a space station or a space station orbiting a planet. I guess. Um, might be a satellite. Like I think there might be the names of the stars on the top, and the planets are the satellites on the bottom. Again, I'm only looking at your screen right now because I I don't yeah. have it up right here. Uh, obviously, I just took the screenshot of the guy looking at it from a backwards perspective flipped it and put it over here. Yeah. Because originally I was going through some of these planets have insane gravities or whatever, and it's like, that's probably the star on the top. And then everything else is below it. Because the, uh, the satellites listed beneath have like relatively Earth-centric gravities and time frames and everything like that, so it makes more sense. It's either that or some of these are gas giants. Could be, and you'll be sent to one of the moons then. Well, yeah, because I mean, I think I did the math on one of them before I realized that the uh, stats on the top must be something else that everything is rotating around, because one of them had basically the gravity of Jupiter. And it's like, wait a second, is that a big old ball of gas in the background? Maybe that's just a gas giant. These are all just moons, like literally moons. Which makes sense, because I think a lot, if we, I mean, if we go by the solar system, the majority of planet side bodies are moons around larger gas giants, so. Alright. I think the biggest thing about the two new fighter models is that they are supposed to be able to perform a fold on their own. 
in 20 something years we've gone from capital ship folding sorry 20 something years that that's not right uh, we are no 30 about 30 years uh 30 something years we've gone from capital ship folding to fighter craft folding we're basically making x wings now it also shows that they, you know, what once was mysterious technology, they continue to evolve and use it and got a better understanding of it. Like in Macross, they didn't know what, well, in Zero and in Macross, they had no idea what they were dealing with. or It was basically theoretical. And now they're like, no, yeah, actually, we can make this stuff, right? Which would, of course, make sense. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to make more ships, right? One day, you know, we'll find or... out where SDF Macross's full device went. Yeah. Folded and death vanished somewhere. Some Planet of the Apes scenario. Not Planet of the Apes. Um, and now I can't think of the name of the movie. Anyway, Monolith, Apes throwing uh, shit around. 2001. 2001. There's a 2001 situation happening with the full device on some alien planet. Let's see. I understand that on meeting Newman, that on meeting Newman tried putting Dyson in his place by uh, trying to uh, scare him with how the last four test pilots did, but on the other hand, as the design chief of the project that he's part of, saying all that kind of makes it seem like he's shit at his own job. Yeah, I no, I think what he wanted to put him in, yeah, it, both. He puts him on his place like, yeah, I'm the boss here, and you're, not just, you're just a pilot, right? And because you people don't know how to follow instructions, this is what happened, right? But it backfires on him because, like, okay, sure. That means you had literally. That's what Isam was saying. You had crappy pilots. I'm better. Well, yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, he plays it up. You know, whose child was this, basically? But yeah. he's the design chief of the plane, right? He's designing the plane. So mm -hmm. you're saying my plane's killed four pilots? Isn't an insult to the new pilot? It feels more like an insult to yourself to self burn. Yeah. So yeah, but he's speaking from the term of a nerd. Is like yeah. I understand. It's a, I'm just saying it get, backfires get, get on good, him. Basically. Yeah, it's a get good attitude. You know. All right, I'm sending you another image. So Dyson's personal history. Yes, I've clipped all the screen montaging down into one image. He won uh, the Roy Fokker Prize in 2037, 2038, and 2039, and then had them taken away in 2040 for reasons unlisted. By the way, hopefully I remember to put this on the screen. It doesn't fit because, I again, it's a larger cropped image, so hopefully in editing I have the scrolling past. I suppose the more interesting things are his convictions and career listings. He was convicted of a parking violation in 2035, the same year he was assigned to the UNN Enterprise, and only 18 days after he took part in the Delta War. He also evidently injured someone in 2037, only a few months after he joined the Earth Defense Force. I it's think... interesting that he's part of the UN Air Force. I mean, uh, transfers, even... right? Yeah, even though they're all, I mean, what's his rank? Let me see, name, assignment, rank, first lieutenant. Although lieutenant is... Well, you would also kind of... remember that he, um, he says he's fighting getting promoted because being promoted too much means he won't be able to fly. Yeah. So we know he's trying to maintain a certain... Also might be interesting that perhaps Earth, the Earth Defense Force is a distinct branch of the larger UN Spacey, right? Well, I mean, it might be so... localized defense forces, right? Yeah. If you're stationed on Echo, you're on part of the Echo Defense Force. And also a lot of fighting. I mean, the yeah. Delta War... That's what I said. Um... He got a parking violation, and he was in the Delta War the same year. But Ave Maria dispute, Hydra civil war, Moon... Uh, well, you're never going to defeat Hydra. You cut one head off and another one takes its place. UN Revolution War? Planet Salvation War? A lot of wars. It, the Delta War, too. I mean, these might be... I think I mean, they're just means... somebody filling in space on the screen. Because once True, again, he but... joined the UNN Enterprise. That's just a sci-fi guy doing some sci-fi shit. Yeah. Yeah, but if if it's if it's taken as is, that means that the preceding thirty eight years have been thirty eight, twenty eight years have been pretty violent. Well, yeah, we had to go out there into space where the Zentradi are, 
Because, I mean, none of this, well, not all of it anyway, indicates it's all us fighting us. This could just be Zentradi combats. Like, god damn it, you remember how the Burgleman fleet came in and that's me making up names on the spot. Burgleman! Yeah. <laughs> the Burgleman <laughs> Zentradi fleet came in and we had to fight those off. That's thousand yeah, something ships. We're going to call that the Delta War. Yeah, it could be. Uh, let's see. I think the thing that jumps out uh, to me is what is missing. We know something happened between Dyson and Myung uh, seven years ago, 2033, but that'd be the year before he joined UN Spacey. Even so, nothing listed as a prior conviction from that time span either. So, whatever we saw in the possible SA was not a crime uh, or was not denoted to him. Also, crime of injury, chronic disease, set of pollen syndrome. Yeah, he's, syndrome. he's allergic to pollen, like everybody oh, else. It's very, it's very interesting. His birth planet is Earth, but his domicile planet is Eden. So I guess he was born on Earth, and at some point his parents moved to Eden. Well, no, it just right? means where he lives. His domicile, his house is on Eden. This, yeah, uh, this he, screenshot he, is taken... No, the screenshot is taken after he's already on Eden. Like, he's already moved to Eden. Yeah, but remember the opening, and they later say on that he was on hi in high school with Mion and Bowman. Oh, no, I and see he, what you're saying. Yeah, no, I, I follow you. Yeah. That If so, this says he's from Earth, then they moved to Eden so that he could have grown up as childhood friends of everybody else. It's possible. Yeah. But this much space travel, you gotta think some people are like interstellar merchants or something. Probably that's what happened, you know. Running away from many of the many wars that are happening in the last 30 years. Yeah. Running away from that traffic ticket, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like I said, what my I, I go into this later on. Um, but yeah, I was looking for a possible SA charge against him. Uh, because remember, that's my that was my biggest problem with his character in the first episode that made me go crazy in the second episode. The thought that he had been a person like that, and he's our main character. Don't worry, I've got more thoughts. I'm not putting it down. I'm just saying that when I wrote that thought, that I was looking for it in that note, and if didn't find it there, I found it interesting. It may have influenced other thoughts. Also, it's very interesting that his interest is girl hunt, and his special ability is reckless run. I think Girl Hunt's probably a television show. Probably. I don't think they wrote also, down like I'm a womanizer on his like own stat sheet. So I think yeah. it's probably it sounds like a TV show. Which probably sounds like a bikini competition or something. Yeah, like a MTV like, Spring Break kind of television show. Or or The Bachelor or something like that. But you know, I mean, this was written before any of those things. So yeah, from a country that they don't originate from either. All right, let's see. Despite the confusion about the fact that Centradi are genetically so much like us, I think it was a uh, definite choice to make it so their actions post-war in the original series were the result of a medical condition and not choice. The implication that Bowman needs to take drugs to inhibit his Centradi tendencies implies that everything we went through after episode 27 of SDF Macross with them was not something that they had control over. And not knowing that, not something any of our characters could really have done anything about. Yes and no. Because I would argue, well, it, it does have a dark undertone. Like, oh, the Centrati are always destined to be violent, right? It certainly has a... Thing. You know, didn't, and I'm yeah, no longer uh, going to crack jokes about uh, genetic predisposition. On the other hand, it might be a genetic predisposition of the Centrati how they're built, but not necessarily something that all Centrati reflect. Right? They refer to might, it as a Centrati condition specifically. Yeah, yeah, but it might not be because we do again in the original series. We also see a lot of a lot of Centrati just peacefully coexisting, right? So it's it could be a willpower know, thing. Yeah, or, you know, and we also see a lot of Centrati. The Centrati are never or rarely shown as being suicidal. 
That's one thing they never really shown. Quantum literally rammed a ship in a suicide run. Yeah, but that's Quantum. Quantum is supposed to be this rebel, and you know he's the allied killer. Uh, the and all that. the Metin leader also rammed it with him. Yeah, holding hands. Assumedly, there was yeah, a but, whole crew of Zentradi on that ship as well. Yeah, but that's that's the exception to the rule. In fact, anytime the Zentradi were like, "Oh, we actually turned the tables on you," they're like, "Oh, we either surrender or they run." Like literally, when Max jumped out of the, into the ship and started firing, the Centrati just gave up the and they just ran for cover, right? So there, so, are, your, your picture of the Centrati is that they're aggressive cowards. Kind of. I mean, oh, they're not man. suicidal. You're you're coming down hard on the side of all orcs are evil. No, 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 no. I'm saying that in fact the opposite. I'm saying that while yes, there is might be a tendency because of their culture. I mean, the militant military culture to be aggressive. I don't know if it maps one to one that all Centradi are always going to be aggressive in this way. Well, it's you know, there's two options here. One, there's another Centradi shows up in the show, and we get comparison. Or two, they don't carry this point forwards into future shows, in which case it's a negative either way. Yeah. For right now. It Right now, 100% of Centradi on screen have to take medication to deal with their, with their problem. Yeah, the problem is, well, he's half Centradi, is actually. He's well, full Centradi. yeah, but again, they call it a Centradi problem. Again, it's sample yeah. size. The sample size yeah. I have is like, not a good uh, it's, research. It's one, yeah. 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 Um, let's see here. Odd juxtaposition between Dyson and Bowman in episode one, where Bowman looks up to Dyson's record. Sorry, looks up Dyson's record and has to take drugs to suppress his desire to fight versus Dyson not goofing around like his record would suggest and actually reading up on the craft he's going to be piloting. I mean, I think it's perspective. Bowman probably thought that he had it on the bag, right? Because all the crashes of the, of the F-119. And he has a personal history of Bowman, right? So he's like, ah, oh, he's my rival. Where Isamu probably is like, there's no one that can beat me. I'm the best pilot there is. All I got to know, I'm a professional and I got to do, I, I, if I know this crap, I have no problem, right? He, he's, he's, it's the greatest I, insult of all, I think, right? Yeah. That I find, I think you are my greatest rival and I'm spending all of my time thinking about you and you're sitting over there doing your homework. Because to you, yeah. I'm a nobody. The greatest, yeah, the greatest insult is finding out that the the thing you've built up in your mind all this time was just you. It's the M Bison line of you know, for you was the you know the greatest day of your life. For me, was a Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. I also just realized the big, the biggest thing in all of my thoughts from episode one, I've put down in my lingering questions area, which. I would have thought I would have made it my first thing, but I have two lingering questions. I don't know why I didn't even do this for the second thought episode thoughts, but one, why does Bowman call Dyson a traitor? There is a that is a very specific accusation. Also, traitor to what? Alright, two, and this is the main point, which I think ruined the whole episode for me, and then uh, this is me trying to take it back with realization later after the fact. We have created a situation where the Centradi are no longer fully responsible for their actions due to a medical situation. I blame Dyson for attempted, you know. Watching that flash again with what uh, that new context, is it not possible that we are seeing Bowman lash out as a result of his condition? That Dyson was protecting Myung from Bowman? It doesn't explain their relationship earlier in the episode, but looks increasingly uh, plausible in hindsight. That is a good question. I, again, putting together the medical thing for Zentradi, but might be the reason that Myung is so forgiving of Bowman, while at the same time, because, you know, if we're, if we're explaining away as an uncontrollable medical condition, we're not making it their fault. We're making it biology's fault. The, like, same thing for, like, 
I don't know. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to go into world. Yeah, examples. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, when I was what I was first seeing, when I first watched the episode and reacted to it, was I was thinking Bowman had come in to defend Myung against, you know, from Dyson, because he's there. The clothes are torn. Everything. It looks bad, but. And a second viewing, when I'm taking all my notes, and with the context that Bowman has to take drugs to suppress his fighting instinct, or whatever, the aggression of a Zentradi, that what if he didn't take his drugs one day, and, you know, lashed out? Like, and that's just uh, Dyson defending Myung from that same position is many interpretations here and it doesn't even have to read as SA. So like I said that's that's a very interesting question indeed. Right. So like I said I I saw it the first time I watched it reacted the way you all saw me react to it and I tinted both episodes back to back with I don't want to see this and I don't want to be tied to a main character who would do such a thing. And now it's in, like in hindsight Everything can be different. So, that's my thoughts on episode one. Episode two thoughts. I think all the times I was trying to figure out Sharon, the thing I wasn't doing was putting two and two together. I brought up how Sharon's brain model thing looked just like Bowman's brain model thing for his plane. In the first episode, we saw that whatever dark thought crossed his mind while hooked up to the device, the jet does i.e. plowing Dyson's jet into the ground. Well, what dark thoughts are going through Myung's mind every time she sees her old acquaintances? Uh, definitely in the concert, I feel like that was put on display. It's just that one of these things isn't a fighter jet, the other isn't a pop idol. They have different capabilities for accomplishing what's thought into them. Yeah. Um, she, I mean, Sharon Apple definitely took a special interest in its own, right? Uh, As connected to the emotional center of Young's brain, apparently. Because this is uh, written, obviously, before the AI chip is delivered to, again, what I believe to be the instigator of everything bad. That uh, Marge, as his name turns out to be. Like I said, I brought up the fact that, hey, that looks like this thing. Hey, that's to do this thing. I didn't say out loud the two things put together. So that's what that is. Uh, let's see. Two episodes in a row, the theme of the dead cannot be brought back to life has been tossed at us. First by Dyson in the simulation chamber in the first episode, and now the colonel talking to Bowman in the second. If it comes up again in the third episode, I'm going to suspect Myung is going to die, and people might look to Sharon as some sort of replacement that never will be. That's an interesting take. Well, I don't know why you would repeat uh, a very, very specific phrase that nobody would say normally on their own in two out of four episodes. But then again, you know, the human mind is wired to look for connections and things. That's why conspiracy theorists, that's why you see tigers and bushes, whatever. <laughs> Let's see. It's the burning bush, man. Well, I don't know. I don't know about you, but if I'm like in a public bathroom, I stare down at the tile and I see all sorts of shit. And then I call the janitor to come in and clean it up. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> like you said, five-year-old humor. I'm going backwards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. The more I think about it, the funny it is. Smellier, too, but yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, speaking of Sharon, we know that she is an incomplete AI and requires Myung to sub in to give her something that she lacks. That is, until Marge gets the top-secret upgrade chip. It makes me wonder if that upgrade is going to let her tap into the new jet uh, design that operates on a brain-reading device almost exactly like hers. Especially since we've already seen her upgraded form controlling devices and calling outside lines. Plus, in the first episode, we saw it have an autonomous body that moved itself into place and get plugged in uh, into the theater controls. If not that, then the fact that Newman is hacking Sharon and making a copy of her for himself on the base's computer system. Which reminds me, Newman is a jackass. 
So yeah, I mean, he's trying to he's trying to make a virtual slave, if you think about it, because he's downloading a person that he thinks is a complete intelligence to mm -hmm. force to do what he wants. Not to mention the fact he's hacking the the real version of it to force to do what he wants. So yeah. Um. But yeah, no. Uh, did you ever watch the movie Stealth? No, because it was very silly. Yeah, but I know this one is two fighter planes, well, three fighter planes, and one of them is an AI and supposedly goes crazy. And they yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, J down. basically the same concept here, but because yeah. we've seen Sharon uh, work outside of her own connected systems and call things, and the fact that Sharon's brain uh, program is basically the exact same as the brain program system that operates the jet, it's everything is uh, aligned to have Sharon control a jet. I don't know if that's where the show wants to go, but I'm just saying it's there. It would also make it, I don't know what the future of Macross has in store, but we could have just dro intelligent drone jets fighting our battles for us. Assuming they don't go crazy and because of ex-boyfriends or whatever. <laughs> hey God, you're cheating on me! Die! Oh, crap. Yeah. Yeah, uh, super ex-girlfriend comes to mind. Uh, let's see. If the YF-21's control system is comparable to the tie-in to Sharon's AI that Myung does, then that means Sharon is likely just a, as culpable to stray thoughts. The same way Bowman visualized crashing Dyson's jet into the ground and it happened, Myung spotted Dyson in the crowd and her heart rate accelerated, which is when Sharon starts ta uh, making out with Dyson. No doubt indicating that she was thinking, but not necessarily what she wanted. Or what she wanted, but wasn't really thinking. No, I think it has to be... Because the example we have from Bowman, Bowman thinks about crashing Dyson's plane into the ground. He doesn't he want, to want to do it, yeah, because he expresses, huh, she's like, shock when it actually happens. So, thought about it, didn't want it. So I have to think that's our example for Myung. Thought about making out with Dyson, didn't want to. Or maybe she did want to. I'm just... I mean, it's a criminal mens rea, actus rea. Criminal thought, uh, criminal act. Right. I don't know, I don't... Uh... If I'm not watching Legal Legal, then I don't know my uh, Latin law. Uh, let's see. My last thought here, and this is the one I literally said to you like right after we watched it, not hearing it in Min May's voice, I completely missed my boyfriend as a pilot being sung. I was forced, uh, was focused on the background showing what looked like rockets being launched and me thinking about the backstory being presented before the song applying to the Unification War. Yeah. I mean, I think those, well, it's very brief, uh, but it seems to be Mi Myung is the one who's thinking about this, and she's looking at the rockets. Uh, it might be another colony fleet taking off, perhaps? I don't know, because those things are so huge. Plus, we saw what they look like taking off in Flashback 2012. They don't have yeah. the the jet plume thing going on. Yeah. That very clearly looked like a, a rocket launch, because hell, the Valkyries don't do that either. So... I don't know. Um, the fact of the matter is, I putting it together in my head now. The what I took to be like destroyed or messed up bushes in front of the rocket launches, also yeah. kind of looks like the art for like destroyed infrastructure that they used during. Do you remember love? So I don't but... know. They're in the 2040s. I don't think any of them is old enough to even being alive at 2012. So, well, here's the thing: the uh, SDF Macross is also in that flash background, not in that same scene. It's in it's in the next scene. So, yeah, um, yeah, and but it, it looks I think like it's, a, it's more like a monument, like the, like it's the flashbacks and the screens behind them, because this is a karaoke room, seem to be like different locales, right? And one of them is like, oh, hey, here's the SDF-1. Like, if you were in that situation, you saw the, you know, uh, the Eiffel Tower, it's like, oh, well, that's not a rocket, that's the Eiffel Tower. It's, it's no, a I, it's a I think this is more, like I, said, I was about to make the point that I don't think it looks the same as it probably should now, because it looks like uh -huh. it did from SDF Macross, like when the towns and cities are still being made. I'd assume with the yeah. progress that's made here on Eden, that that place should be like New York City by now, right? So that shouldn't look like that. So yeah. that this is just a slideshow of the past, and they're singing, Perhaps. 
singing with the landscape that would have been around when Min May was singing the song. Um, Probably. Shit, I had another thought, but then I went through explaining my first thought. <laughs> Damn it! Um. Yeah, well, I'm going to leave that there then. I can't remember where I was going. Uh, shit. Nah. Uh, anyway, those were my, all of my thoughts about the last two episodes because, again, I had to go back to note take for not having missed anything. Was there anything that you wanted to bring up about the first two episodes before we get into episode three? Um, I'd like to say that the, the for the most part, compare it especially again to sdf1 is that and this is an ova and we've seen it in zero they've been very good at at compacting the storytelling right using the amount of time that they have and really having a good curve like it's not all action and it's not all you know oh hey you remember me you love me whatever right um also, and a point is that there seems to be that in fact Miyun and Bowman, Bo Bowman, yeah, Gold uh, slept together after the events, after the escape of from. Um... Well, yeah, he explicitly says, like in the first episode, he says the woman and the plane will be mine, or the project. Yeah. The woman and the project will be mine, and the next time he sees him in episode two, or some after he sees him in episode two, he says it's just the project now. So yeah, he implies it himself. Yeah, which is interesting considering that you know that red tinted, um, uh, you know, back, you know, I'm blanking on the uh, the flashback, not back flash. I say back flash, but it's flashback. Um, where there might have been some conflict between the three of them, and so you know, yeah, it, it, that puts a an interesting caveat on what you and I were thinking would happen in that flash. Like I said, the whole medical thing is what's changed my mind about things, or at least putting them in a different perspective. Yeah. At least, I mean, not in a perspective of, oh, that explains it, it's fine then, but more in a perspective oh, yeah. of why Myung is willing to to disregard the past or reconsider. Like, she even goes on about things are different than they were before. Like, she has a whole point about making sure that everybody understands that everything has changed. Yeah. Also, checking back on Isamu's, he died, he, he was died. Uh, he was born in 2015. Uh, so, currently he's age 24. So, yeah, he was clearly born. That means that if they were all in the same class in high school, maybe one grade apart, something like that, maybe two at most, because high school only has, like, four grades, and five at most, depending where you go and what what you think he about high school. was never alive for SDF Macross. Yeah, he was born after, and that means all of them were born after, right? They're they're the they're the next generation, literally, uh, after the events of of uh, a twin of the space, I mean, the space war. They are the next generation, and he was on the Enterprise. The Enterprise. No, no. Oh, is it is it uh, two words on that? Two one? words. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In my notes, I just wrote down Enterprise one word because I knew what they were doing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They were. You know. I mean. They named one character Bowman and another one Dyson, you know, so. Yep. All right. Well, I think that's it, unless you have anything else you want to add. Oop. All right. Well, with that, I guess we should just go ahead and get on into it. But before we get started, make sure that you hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button. Comment down below to feed that algorithm. On top of all that, if you want to watch more shows like this, unfiltered, uncensored, and uncut, as well as some early access stuff, you can check it out over on the Patreon. It's just $5 a month, but hey, no pressure. There's zero pressure in order to do that. It's just a little bit of extra support and it would be greatly appreciated. I just didn't realize this one was a longer length episode. I was just messing over the play button. I saw it says 41 minutes. I was like, whoa. It's an OVA. They can do whatever they want with the time. Yeah. I'm guessing that the fire thing in the middle is the AI, and the chains are what's holding the AI back. Yeah. Just looking for a visual interpretation. That's all I did the last two episodes. Oh, right, he got shot. Well, no, he, he got slammed he was against in, the ground. He was in the YF-19. It got shot. 
by bowmen who use yeah. real ammunition. So this is the oh, I wish Macross he was, version. I wish he was just ahead, and then they put him into the YF-21 as the control mechanism. By the way, that's not a healing tank. That's just a bathtub. He was dirty. <laughs> Bam, that's... <laughs> that's a, well, I mean, there was a lot of dirt in there. Took those things a while to go off. Well, it, it's when the moments start breaking. No, no, I mean, like, he was up, and then they go off. And EKG will go start flashing at you the moment it stops making contact. まあ、ハイウェイ。むしろ彼が私を撃とうとしていたのではないでしょうか。彼の行動が挑発的だったのは基地の人間ならば誰もが知っています。it's a real hard tell. What are you accusing me of putting bullets, real bullets, into my opponent's gun? あれにそんな下等がむしろ君の得意とする分野じゃないのかね。彼のチームには優秀なハッカーもいると聞いていますが。その時点でのノーハデータの記録はそれが事件の直前からブランクに。ブランク。ノーハコントロールシステムが支障
But Millard there sounded like he's like, we need pilots, we don't need automated drones. So it seems like he's on the YF-19 side, but why would he collude with Bowman? There's a lot of shit that don't make sense now. You got a long neck. <laughs> Look at it. It's like twice the size of a normal neck. <laughs> <laughs> he has the mentality of somebody who walks up to you and says, Hey, smell this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was good. I should know I'm from her. So ちゃんと良い周到に鉄砲を持ってるもんさ。バカな無鉄砲と違ってたな。良い周到か。いいやなことだろ。あ、一体何があったの？猿も木から落ちたわけ？お前には関係ねえよ。何よ、人に心配させ
I don't know. We don't have any Centrati folding balls. So, take out the command ship, you take everything out. Also, he showed up with flowers, and obviously she's not here. I don't know what they can accuse anybody of. Like what? Bowman filled his gun with bullets so that he'd get shot by real bullets? Not a good look if you get your ass kicked by somebody who was literally just hospitalized. <laughs> Oh. So you think this was what it was? I can't ask you, you know. Audience member, do you think this is what it was? It's a medical condition. Yeah, but he's talking about both of them. Look like Ray's son that Sharon is watching. That's brilliant. Why don't people make that for real? I think they do. I've never seen that. And then you told everybody here. <laughs> I mean, Newman already said, hey, a vital part of this thing is missing. Hey, Tenma would say the same thing. It's a Why are you two still here? I mean, Lucy, maybe I understand, but Newman? 
Well, remember Newman is, is obsessed with Sharon. Sharon as well. I know, but in the act of uh, Isamu and uh, Gold, sorry, Gold, in Myung, it's like, why is, I don't know. Feels like such an awkward third man situation. Is that Marge? I think so. ナニシルの私の部屋で地球に戻ることになりました。明日にもエデンを立ちますので準備しておいてください。随分急な話ね。マクロスの統合本部から連絡がありましてね。宇宙大戦終結30周年記念式典でコンサートをしてほしいとの
I think my problem is is that I'm trying to recontextualize their every time they're together, their relationship status with the flashback. I don't know the reality of it, but I would assume if it was my first thought, I would need more than seven years to get over that. But if it was just them fighting one another, and for some reason she got like right in the middle of it. I like the fact that she has air butts <laughs> in 1992. I mean, I probably wireless uh, MP3 players didn't exist, but... No, we were still Walkman. That was 90s yeah. was the Walkman era. Yeah. As somebody who used like my Walkman that... to record stereos, yes, I remember yeah. it. I like that this is the ship that's going to take her to space. It's actually a ship. No, you know. You get a lot of that in Legend of the Galactic Heroes, where they have water ports where spaceships also come in and land. You know, we also have airports that serve as spaceports, so. But we have anti gravity and large ships. It makes sense to displace the ships on water rather than on land. Mind you, this is a show that also has giant robots in two legs, so yeah, there's that. Yeah, the thing that Gundam creators said that they actually looked into trying to make and discovered was impossible. That's why Gundams were always meant to fight in space, where they would only logically exist. But in space, you don't need... Do you really need legs no. like that? No, but uh, the idea is that the physics of it also doesn't work in gravity. So, space is the only place that they can physically work. I mean, he's already survived longer than your last four pilots. Sorry, is that a Nazi astronaut in your background? <laughs> it really looks like one. I always get so happy when I'm prophetic about such things. We spent the whole pre-show discussion talking about it. I guess it also explains why he was even remotely supporting the YF-21. Because the YF-21 is still human-controlled, and he's about human control, whatever. So we're gonna head to Earth, following Myung, have a competition there, have the Macross be in the background so we can legitimately call this Macross. This is a weird sentence to run off on. 
Well, at least he's able to talk to him and say, hey, this is where we stand, right? I know that you're not in love with me, so... I'm well, yeah, I just mean it you. seems like the, the, the line to start a confession on, right? Not to run away with. I mean, I think he makes a better pair with Lucy anyway. Because she's, like, down for his thrill-seeking ways. Remember the the motorcycle road trip thing we did, episode one? Yeah, but it seemed to... It, to me, it seemed that he was... Let's use... Working to restore power. What's also interesting that this was released at the 30th anniversary... Not, was it the 30th anniversary? Oh, uh, Matt Cross, let me see. No, I think that was... Um, I guess they uh, consider the... Uh, frontier, Frontier. I guess they consider the space war to have ended a year after the show did. Or a year after the destruction of Earth. No, okay, no. The the actual 30th anniversary of the show is much later. Oh, I thought Macross Lake would actually have Macross in it. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that guy is the, just the bad guy. There we go. Looks like no one has polished it in a while, though. Still seems to be powering the city, too. It's gonna have a skull on it. There's gonna be a skull on this jet. Should not wow. have a camera in that room. Yeah, no. That was sexual assault, by the way. Are they sexual harassment? I think it's the same thing now. I it's physical contact in a sexual manner, which is assault. Yeah, I don't want to debate the specifics of it. No, no, no. I just don't. don't so, are you telling me that our uh, watch through of CSI is not going to happen? <laughs> I would think that would lock you out completely. Well, never mind. I guess the magnetic seal on the door is very weak. <laughs> Sitting in the dark waiting for you. What? <laughs> Yeah, I hacked the bathroom camera. Yeah. It's a real dumb move to choke out the person who's literally controlling the security system right now. Ouch. I gotta feel like that would hurt Isamu more. More, yeah. Well, he does have a hard head either way. It's it! Yes, sir. They folded in the hangar? Come on, man. No. Oh, I thought that's what the explosion was. Everything around it being destroyed. Oh, 
Well, new colors to the fold, I guess. Okay, they were liver spots. Never mind. When I saw how chapped up his face was during the yeah. um, the meeting earlier, I was like, God, this guy's been through something. It's like radiation burns or something. No, it's just really old. Yeah. By the way, they re I don't think I've mentioned this even in a flashback. They repaired the top struts. On the cross. この式典に相応し、ゲストを招待できて、私も嬉しいよ。声です。シャロンアップルの人工知能が完成に及ぶ。Oh, he doesn't know. Oops. Well, yeah, no, it was like an underhanded deal. Yeah. Yeah, but he, but the also, general this thought is that new. he knew. This is new, too. Yeah. We're treating a fold like a wormhole. Before, it was just boom, boom. Oh, no, yeah. never mind, actually. There was the whole, when the Centrati took, ship traveled. Yeah, we were like, it took a while it was like for them. folding. Yeah. We just never saw from the outside. Yeah. あ、マージ。最高司令がなぜシャロンの人工知能の未完成 so technically, they've already had advanced AI and outlawed it off screen. <laughs> so you were trying to gaslight me by the by the manager guy. Not showing up anymore. Koko wa mojiki anata no shio kini suru mono mo inai machi ni narundes. Sharon shika mienai. Sharon no koe shika kikoe. I mean, I gotta be fair. We were playing like a cyberpunk game or something. I would be marked in the scenario. <laughs> gotta get my AI out there somehow. <laughs> Run. That's what happens when you fail the initiative roll. They act first, and they run all their speed, and you don't know what's going on. I don't know if I like the maroon color of those uniforms. It looks a bit too drab. I prefer the blue. I don't know. They're not dressed like they were originally. I'm happy. I'm happy that at least something changed in 30 years. I and mean, we also did see Sharon's mobile unit walking around again, too. Yeah, I was actually going to bring that up in the notes. That when the original Sharon plugged herself in, the wire just floated up into the air and plugged them in. 
like techno kinetics or whatever it's called. I know you're hanging from the air and I'm literally strangling you with cable right now, but you don't need to worry. Because I'm you and I know you're into this. <laughs> Oh, wow, the symbolism. No, nothing to see here. Yeah, exactly. Top of the long pauses. And less censorable material, please. Look at the arms. Of them across? Yeah. They're not the carriers. They're from uh, from the movie. They're armed and well, to be fair, though, those were carriers, too. Yeah, yeah but I know. Space carriers. I'm not happy with that. To be fair, the armed 1 and 2 got destroyed three times now. They don't deserve to be the arms. All right, well, one assumes that she locked up Myung for her own safety, so something horrible is about to happen. All right, also not where I thought we were going to get left off. I do be fair, though, it is a good cliffhanger for, you know, whatever the hell is about to happen. I have to assume that she trapped Myung in the former control chamber to keep her safe from whatever is about to happen. Also notice that they are aboard the SEF-1. Well, they're not aboard it. They're in front of it. No, no. They're in it. Well, I didn't think they're in it, because that's the same control chamber layout that they had on Eden, which means it's just a mobile place that they're moving around. Either way, that's not even the focus. I mean, if you're saying she's going to take control of SEF-1, I was going the other way, thinking that the, uh, she's going to take over the ghost drones, the X-9s. Because literally it seems like that's what's being set up. What I thought for the UIF-21, but for the X-9s instead. Makes more sense in my head that she would have taken over the YF-21. But apparently, you know. I mean, it'd be easier to take over an AI system or already existing. Well, no, no, because the YF-21 has a brain read system that's exactly like the brain uh, layout of her own program. So it'd be literally like a one-for-one -one substitution. Not even a substitution, it'd be a blank spot that's literally form-fitted for your program. That's what I'm saying, it's one-for-one. One. Literally, it feels like she can move her control center into the YF-21, and if she has a mobile platform that can fold and suddenly, and then control a fleet of drones, too. Assumedly, I'm going to guess the drones can fold, but I don't know. She could be on her own mobile fleet. A threat yeah. to everyone. Well, assumedly, she knows more about humans than the Centrati, so, you know, not really that much yeah. of a threat to the Centrati. I, think I, I mean, love the music. I was literally just about to say, I think I've indicated before, not my favorite music. Oh, man. I actually love the entire I know, you I said you bought the, the album. Yeah. The two soundtracks, yeah. Okay, I didn't know what it was. You said you bought it before when we started the first yeah. episode. I mean, it's all right. It's not like... I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's not like what I would go out to listen to on my own. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm on YouTube and if I want a soundtrack or something to listen to while I'm doing something, 
not gonna be this. However, if I was like in a doctor's office waiting room and this was playing, I'm not like gonna complain. Okay, yeah, uh, that's that's an interesting setup. Yeah, I have spent a surprising amount of time in doctor's offices oh, no, I, and whatnot. I, I, I believe you. It's just that that was like, yeah, if I'm trapped in hell waiting for the devil, I might as well listen to his music. Oh no, I'm not like waiting doctor's offices to that sort of thing. I'm just saying that, like, I prefer like the doctor's offices that play classic rock. And things like that, um, versus yeah. the ones that play weird inspirational music or local radio, you know. I so, hate the ones where they have the, the local soap opera on. Like, ugh. See, I had no problem with that because I think I've told you before that when I used to work at a warehouse, I would take my breaks at a gas station nearby, and on their TVs sometimes they would have a soap opera or whatever. And it's like it's better than the news. I don't want to. Honestly, I'm better off not knowing what's happening in the world because it's all horrible all the time. Nobody does, like, happy pieces like, hey, look at a kitten, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I I watch some soap operas on lunchtime, so obviously can't keep up with the story when you're watching for 20 minutes a, a week or whatever. I don't... Not my favorite. It's the same reason why I don't like wrestling. I mean, I, I grew up liking wrestling. Obviously, I didn't watch it since the yeah. turn of the century. Yeah, no, I mean, every everybody my age was like, oh, wrestling's the best. And I was like, uh, I don't get it. And now I know why. I mean, to be fair, I think it just lump it in like the same category as like Sentai, right? Like Power Rangers, or whatever. It's just two people, two groups of people fighting. It's like every show that we watch. What's what's the difference between this and uh, wrestling? It's just Ghoul and uh, Isamu fighting. Yeah. And wrestling these days has so much story wrapped around it. You, I can imagine a whole wrestling event where every time a wrestling match is done, we go to the camera in the back room, and it's just like Gold gets talking to somebody about their history together with Myung. Yeah. And then we, mm -hmm. and oh, what's this? It's Samu's marching down the hall because he's upset about something he heard. And oh, now they're fighting in the hallway. Yeah. You'd be surprised how much shit you could just probably turn in to the WWF now. Well, WWE, because... Right, you know, right, see. Lost. Well, see, I started with WCW, so that was me even trying to change that to Timely, so... I will say, though, I did see, back in the day, the WCW one uh, wrestlers, and I didn't realize how tall they were and how, you know, how massive they were. And that's the moment I went like, okay, these guys, wrestling might be fake, but what they have to do every night to put on a good show, that takes an enormous amount of talent. And I do respect that. Well, yeah, I mean, um, like I read Hulk Hogan's biography. Obviously, that's not going to play well with age. But uh, back then, he, w he would go on about how you had to get trained to do actual wrestling before you could then do wrestling. You know, fake. Which we, all, we all know wrestling's fake. Maybe back in the 90s and before, we didn't really. But... We all know that wrestling is fake, yeah. So, yeah, you have to learn to do the real moves so you can do the fake moves properly and also not yeah. break some bones while you're trying to do a fake move. It's like being a good stuntman, basically. Yeah, That's I mean, magic, yeah. you know, like how Hulk Hogan ripped his back out lifting up Andre the Giant. Good, yeah. And how he's dealt with a lifetime of bad knees from all the shit that he's done. I think the thing they say, he's got no... Um, uh, shit, what's the stuff between your bones called? I can't remember off the top of my head. Cartilage? cartilage? Yeah, he's got no cartilage between his uh, his knee bones. So really? he's constantly getting surgeries and stuff done on them. Damn. So, yeah, yeah for all the, the, for all running, the shit yeah. that you thought was dumb, this dude's killing himself to get... So, yeah. yeah, it's all about what you're worth. I mean, not what you're worth, what you're willing to do for what you... I don't know, I would say enjoy, but more like maybe have to do. Which kind of ties in with what we were last seen, where, you know, uh, Isamu goes half cocked, well, fully cocked, I suppose, because he's, you know, loaded for bear to try to show off the X9, right? To show who's a better pilot. Well, he also knows, implies, I guess, that he was not prepared to steal the YF 19 by the fact uh -huh. that if uh, Newman hadn't hacked the security system, that anybody would have seen him coming. Yeah. Well, I think, well, I think he was confident enough, self-confident enough that he would make it and, you know, that he was... You know, right, well, that's, course, again, 
dutiful. He would have been arrested. That, was, that, that wasn't the word. Not dutiful. What was the word? Prudent. He was. Yeah. He was. He was. He had prudent. no prudent. Not, no, he yeah, had no that. prudent. Like, not even using the word right. Prudence. He was imprudent. Is the point? Yeah. Would, yeah. Which is the whole discussion that he had with Myung about. It's like, yeah, you know, you you always go and try to do things, but you don't really think about the consequences. Right. Which I don't know. I understand why people might like uh, a character like that, but it's just like obviously not my kind of character in this aspect. But at the same time, I'm not with Bowman either. Bowman yeah. has those aspects, but his personality is also one that I'm not down for, like enjoying as a character. I mean, I don't dislike him as a character. It's not what I meant to say. I mean, he's as possessive. A well, primary like character. He's... Yeah, he's possessive. Like, oh, I'm gonna have the project, and I'm gonna have her. It's like, dude, she's a person. He's a human being, you know. Yeah, I guess it's that. Uh, well, one '90s feel, but also probably from a storyline written in the '80s. So, I don't know. I kind of, I, mean, I, I know that I'm coming off as it was a different time, but in media, well, in media at that time, that was still kind of how things were being handled. But. That's the thing that Isamu and what's her name? Oh, it's she's in the board. Uh, Lucy McMillan, they both act more mature, right? Do they? McMillan's like, yeah, okay. McMillan doesn't give her give her the message that he should have given to him, right? So that's. But then he says, you know what? You don't belong to anybody, right? I mean, again, she, that he, felt she, more like the the romance start line. You don't belong to anybody. Now hear me list off the three reasons why we should be together. It it sounds like the counter argument to why she doesn't want him to wind up with Myung, but her instead. You know? Your but past it it doesn't define you. Just because you've got these seven years between you of whatever happened back then, you don't belong to anybody. You can be with somebody else. But it came out as... She understanding that because that she ran away, <laughs> that didn't make any sense yeah. to me. Everyone yeah. in this show does something that I think is going to lead to something else, and then does something completely opposite. Which is my difficulty with the characters. I think my problem might lie with the fact that I don't watch much shit in the nineties, right? So I I am distant from that source of media. Well, and he doesn't he doesn't do the thing where he chases after her back, uh, uh, confirming the fact that he's not, I mean, he's not, the whole situation was like, I just, oh, hey, she's pretty and I want to be with somebody. So here come, you know, here, honey. But he wasn't never really serious about her. Yeah, no, it's a flame. But the, same, the flame, but he never was also disrespectful to her. Not really. It was definitely oh, yeah, yeah. That moment um, where he tried to shove her head into an oil tanker as it's going by. Completely respectful. I do this with the utmost dignity. Hope you don't put your face into it. Did she? Did he do that? Yeah, when the motorcycle. Did he do that? First episode when they're going down the road, and she's uh -huh. like, "I don't want to commit double suicide," and then uh -huh. he immediately speeds forward, leans hard against the motor, uh, the oil tanker that's going by, and they're like uh -huh. this far, and she's screaming. And then after the fact, she seemed to enjoy it. But I don't think you need consent after the fact. Otherwise, a lot oh. of crimes would... Look, my jokes are going hard these days. I'm trying to pull back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I remember that one. I thought that he just, like, slammed her head into something. No, no. The, the implication was if he was a little less careful, a little more... A little less imprudent, if one might say. That, you know? He wouldn't do... Yeah. yeah, he wouldn't do such things. but Or he wouldn't do such things without warning. Like, he didn't even give you a, hey, you better hang on. You know, it was just cranked up. She could have just fallen backwards into traffic if she was not holding on as hard as she was. I'm just But saying. again, it's part, of, it's part of his nature is like, act first, think later, right? And uh, he doesn't think about the consequences of his actions, only what he wants. He wants to do this. And I think that's the reason why he's so angry at Myung, because it's like, oh, you wanted to sing. Why didn't you sing? That's what he wanted. You know, I don't get this whole thing about, you You know, it's, I'm not excusing it. I'm just trying to understand it right, and explain it. Well, she's giving a whole everything changed after that. And here's yeah. the reasons why things will never be the same. And most of the time, I feel like in most shows, the train of thought would be, 
understanding what's going on here and the relationships between the characters. And Asamu is, fuck that, I don't give a shit about what you just said. Here's the reasons why you're wrong, and here's the reasons why I live my life the way I live it. Right? So, he's going against the grain of conventional narrative wisdom about yeah. scenes like this. And I am sure for people that like that character that that's fine. But imagine that you are in the worst situation of your life and somebody is approaching you with this style of advice. Like, yeah. fuck you, stop crying. What's your problem? You know, it's like, that's yeah, not the jerk. word. He's yeah, being, yeah it's not what you me. need. I don't understand yeah. why these people are friends. Oh, well, they're clearly not anymore. I don't understand why these people were friends. But then again, we don't spend a lot of time on flashbacks, except for one weirdly inappropriate one. I don't know. I think it's. I think that the reason why Sam is Sam is trying to find something. He's missing something, right? He's missing a conscience. Something to to fight for and for to live. For, a sense of stability. Right? Yeah. Well, he doesn't and want goal. that though. Here's the problem. Dude just stole a top secret uh, fighter jet from a military base, uh, and expects what to happen. No, Clearly, he knows he's. He knows he's gonna get court martial. He just said so. Yeah, yeah, no, right? his life is ruined. So what are you? What's the point? He wants to prove himself, basically. To to what end? After you're done to proving himself, yourself, mostly. spend your life in jail. Rikers, Rikers, is that it? Well, no, Rikers got blown up in 2012. No, 2009. Yeah. 2009. Yeah. 2009, yeah. as more people would say. <laughs> yeah. It's also funny, I guess, now to discover that a year after. Uh, the war ended. We declared the war was over. So maybe, well, no, I, I would say maybe the Centro well, maybe the Centrati kept fighting. The, the remnants of the Centrati kept fighting for an extra year, and then the war was over. Perhaps, or you know, you have the formal declaration. It's like the declaration of the end of a war, right? Basically, it takes time to do that. Sure, Britai held up things for a while. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna I fight mean, with you, you, but now. Yeah. But now you're damaged, and we still got a thousand ships. And you're one ship. <laughs> I think. I think maybe your culture belongs to us. All your base, as they say. I don't know. I think it's, like, it's an interesting uh, uh, conceit that even though we saw that the war happened in 2009, and we say the war, it was literally just effectively one battle. I mean, there were multiple battles with the SDF-1. Well, there was so. no declaration of war, though. Yeah, never. never. Re I mean, the fact that it's called Space War War is after the fact, right? Like, calling World War One World War One after the fact, right? Oh, let's... What happened? Uh, it was the first time the humanity had a war in space. So let's call it Space War One, right? Right. I just, I just mean that... Well, we got a date for it, is my point. And before then, I would have just assumed that 2009 is when the war ended because who else are we fighting right but yeah. then again how can we ever be done fighting this centrati this show started or sorry this ova started with us fighting centrati so clearly we're still fighting them and at what point do you say the war is over if the galaxy is filled with thousands of different fleets and every one of them is centrati and every one of them is going to want to destroy you at that or point, why possibly... would you even populate new worlds? Well, to guarantee your survival. No. This is trying to destroy worlds like that. The movie didn't even think it was worth putting on screen. You literally put, make more of the crosses and then put all the people in those. At least have your population in, like, battle cruisers that can defend themselves. I mean, you spread them out because you need, you need food and water and all that. You need those resources. If they destroy the only source of food and water you have, eventually, you're going to die. Biodomes, man. This is the 90s. We still think that shit works. Yeah, no. I mean, I think it, it's... The Poly I mean, Shore was... and one of those things? We're good. <laughs> no, I think spreading across the galaxy was the thing. No, and no, also... I'm, not, I'm not arguing against spreading across the galaxy. I'm just saying put all your population into Macross units across the galaxy. I would never feel safe being on a planet knowing that in 30 seconds this whole Centrati fleet could just appear overhead and we're all dead. Billions of people. Well, I think they significantly weakened the Centrati because it doesn't seem like they're fighting like 
major battles and like that. I think it was heavily implied that Golg led one fleet. Yeah, Golg's fleet, yeah, and then there's many Centrati fleets out there. Yeah, but that one was a four million. Yeah, and we don't know what the average Isaac. was. Golk could have had a small fleet. Golk could have a large fleet. Golk could have an average fleet. We don't know where in the uh, the realm of uh, sizes he fell into. So the fact that there's thousands more of possibly millions each fleets, I would have. I would have the deepest fucking bunker. I'd be like, how much are they selling Alaskan base for? <laughs> Me and all of my descendants are going to have a new place to live. I don't care if you take out all the super weaponry. It was deep enough to survive one blast. I'll take another one, please. Yeah, but I guess this is the... Uh, this is... This is an extrapolation with very little data besides what we see in, in SCF maps. I'm saying the goal of everybody to live on the surface. Like, after that happened, we should have, like, planetary bunkers at this point. I don't know. It just seems great. It's the world building that I would do if I was considering, okay, one day the planet got destroyed in seconds after the, an alien invasion. Everybody now lives underground because nobody trusts to live on the surface. Crazy people live on the surface. I would do what uh, Macross did with the men and women thing. But I would do it with like a society thing. That there's two different societies. We have the people who live underground because they went all survival instinct after uh, Space War One, and we have the crazy people who live on the surface, who just Isamus basically Isamus <laughs> all over the surface of the planet. All right. Well, you have any final thoughts on this episode? I'm looking forward to the next one. Okay. Well, I think that's been us for today. I'm Theta. This is Lessons. We've been Stoneface Reactions, and we will catch you next time. Bye bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below, and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?